Here's some willow. Let's see if we can get a little bit better view of it right here. It does like water. Let's see if I can move on down a little bit here and take a look at some more right in here. There's a broken off branch right there. Now um, that's what I'm looking for. Well, I'm in the scrub. Um, I'm gonna pinch if I needed a cord, I guess. There's, <laughs> there's plenty of yucca right here. Um, and uh, plenty of palmettos in there. But, uh, I'm on what I'm after right now and where I'm going ahead is right over here. And here's a limb, scrub oak limb. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get me a bearing block off of it, which will be harder than the willow that I got earlier. So see if I can set this up so you can see how I cut it. It's my uh, trusty Swiss Army knife. Nice little tool at uh, saw. So what I want to do is I want to come up here put my hand on it. <clears throat> See where I want it to be, and I'm going to cut halfway through it. And then I'm going to push down on it and see if I can't split it the rest of the way through. There it goes. Hold my hand over it so I can see the size of it. And I'll come up up here and cut it off. And that gives me a bearing block. But, got to get it down, so I need to uh, whittle it down to shape. And that's going to take a little while, so I'll come back at it in a minute. <laughs> well, I'm walking down this gully, and see this. Virginia sand pine, Virginia pine or sand pine uh, here. So, and right off the side here is a limb. Came off of it. It looks like I don't know. It looks like a good fire bow to me.
have a lot of people ask me about uh, my fire bow set and its parts. Um, so what I thought I'd try to do is break it down, you know, maybe part by part. Uh, so, um, start off with the board and spindle. This came from uh, that willow branch earlier. Um, and uh, a good way to, and my trusty uh, Swiss Army knife here. Um, with the uh, with the saw, um, one way to uh, that I like to do test the wood is to uh, cut off a little bark. I like to press my fingernail in and see how it holds a little etch there. That's what I'm looking for. With the fingernail test is uh, the etch test. If it etches, I'm usually good to go. If it presses in too far, it's probably rotten. If it doesn't etch, then it's too hard, like like the bearing block I cut from that scrub oak. I try to press my fingernail into it, it doesn't etch at all. It's because it's hard. And that's why I want the oak for my bearing block, because it's harder than the willow. Um, and uh, it will, uh, will uh, won't, uh, it's better for a bearing block up top. It'll reduce the friction and, and uh, it doesn't wear down. The bearing block doesn't wear down a wall out. So uh, anyway, um, that's what I like to do. Just try to find standing wood like, you know, like that willow was standing. Um, uh, it's dead, it's dry. Um, you know, unless it's got something else, uh, it's got sap in it or something like that, then you might have a problem. But you know. Uh, so you want standing, solid, um, sap-free wood that's, uh, that's dry and uh, should be good to go. Um, as far as the board goes, um, and I'm going to cut this piece from my spindle, um, which I'll have to straighten out as much as I can because it tends to be a little curved. Um, but uh, I'm going to try to cut this down. And what I want to do is get it flat on two sides and then square it up on the ends. And I want the thickness of the board to be just about the size of what my spindle is going to be. I don't want uh, uh, my spindle to be, uh, well I don't actually want the board to be uh, thicker than my spindle because what happens is all my dust will go down and my heat will be up here. So I want my, my heat and my dust to be together. And uh, uh, that's why I want my uh, spindle to be as close to the, to the width of the board as possible. The thickness of the board, not the width. Obviously I want the width to, to be wider than the spindle, but the thickness uh, to be about the same. And uh, that's pretty much it for uh, the uh, board and spindles. Oh, as far as sizes go, um, I can go with small sets or larger sets. It just depends on the on the situation um, and the materials. Because sometimes I'll use uh, stocks instead of just you know branch wood. So um, uh, as far as this baseboard goes, about as long as my foot's fine, just so I can get my foot on it, so that I can hold it down. Um, and the spindle. I don't get too fancy with that either. A little bit bigger than my my little finger and my thumb spread is good. Uh, measurement wise, maybe six to eight inches, sometimes up to ten inches, but no greater than ten usually because then it gets and then I have problems. Uh, it gets wobbly. It's uh, too far up and you know uh, too short. Uh, then I'm having problems seeing uh, the cold form. So um, anyway, that's that's kind of how I like it anyway. Um, as far as my board and spindle go, and I'll cut these to shape later. <clears throat> and I'll have to cut a hole, a, a divot for the socket here in this uh, piece of uh, scrub oak. Um, here's the bow. I've already cut it down a little bit. Um, so I've left a fork at the top for my cord. And uh, 
to tie it off down here. So uh, I'll get this stuff uh, sorted out and ready to go. And it won't take too long to do that. And uh, well, as far as my bow goes while I'm on the subject, uh, I like it to be a longer bow um, because uh, I get more run of the of the uh, cord, uh, the length of the cord on the spindle. So I don't have to work as hard. If I have a shorter bow, then I'm gonna have to work a lot harder and uh, with the bow. And I don't really want to do that. I want to, uh, you know, uh, not use as much energy, not any more energy than I have to. So uh, a longer bow is a little bit better. I like mine to be um, dead uh, and stiff. Some people don't. They like theirs to be lim limber. But what I find with limber bows is um, then I get cord tension problems, you know, with the with it bowing back and forth, and then that causes me problems. And I, I would I prefer a, a stiff uh, bent uh, limb uh, because then all I have to worry about is applying some maybe some tension on the cord with my thumb or my fingers, you know, to adjust it if I need to. And that's pretty much it for the bow and the block. And uh, I'll talk about the cord a little later on. Okay. Got the board cut down. It's a willow board and willow spindle. And it's about as thick as the board is. But the board's wider. So I can make my divot and uh, and then go ahead and, and uh, make the burn hole here and uh, as far as the cord goes um, I've got this cord right here this is a nylon cord that I made it's a two ply this actually was part of a rope a nylon rope but I recorded it into a cord of its own so by itself, uh, just a two-ply. And uh, the thing about cords is, um, if the cord is relatively strong enough, um, you know, I have a modern cord, then I'll, I'll more than likely I'll go ahead and use a tension method um, with it. But uh, you know, if I have a natural plant fiber cord that I'm using that I made on the spot, you know, either a palmetto two-ply palmetto cord or a two-ply yucca cord or something like that you know those cords are invariably going to be a little bit weaker so um, being a weaker cord um, I want to use a little bit different method that's not going to be as uh, hard on the cord so that the cord will last a little longer um, so I like to use the Egyptian method um, when, if I have a weaker cord or if I have say my, I'm using a stock instead of uh, you know a limb here for my spindle I'm using a stock and maybe it's cattail or maybe it's uh, you know a uh, real thin dog fennel or or uh, horse meat or something so if if I have a, a more of a fragile spindle that's another time that I like to use the Egyptian method because it's it's uh, it's easier on the cord and it's a little easier on the, uh, the spindle too so if, if I Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and tie in my uh, overhand knot here on the on the running line. I already have a overhand knot in the end that prevents it from sliding through. So it it'll run right on the cord. And then I can go ahead and slide that on the end of the, the bow here and tighten it up. And then run it down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the Egyptian method just to show, um, I think, here uh, what I do with the Egyptian method. It's a little different than the, um, than the tension method. The tension method is fairly easy, um, whereas I just take the, uh, the spindle and give it one turn around like that. So what I'm going to do here though, using the Egyptian method, 
is um, I'm going to take, I'm going to put a clove hitch not in the middle. Roughly in the middle, maybe a little further down. I say right in here. So I want to make a loop over itself and I want to make another loop and I'll just put the one loop on top of the other and then I'll take the end that I want to go on my bearing block and run it through here tighten it up and as you can see it's a pretty good little knot right there in the middle it's not going anywhere it eliminates a lot of the problems that, you that I typically have with the tension method there's no cord slippage um, usually with this knot and um, the spindle doesn't fly off under tension and uh, um, so you know it has a lot of it has a lot of advantages but uh, it can be a little ungainly I guess is maybe a drawback to it but um, what I do is I take one two three four this time around. I take four or five wraps, four above the knot, and I'm going to take one, two, three, four below the knot with this end, and I'm going to hold it tight, put my foot on on the spindle, pull it tight, and do the same thing. I'll just uh, double it, bring it through, put my slip knot in, down at the end like that. 